course, we're going to use a number of hacking tools. You can install each of these tools manually, or you can do what most hackers do, including myself, and save time and effort and use an operating system designed for hacking. We're going to use an operating system called Kali Linux. It's a Linux distro based on Debian, and the only difference between Kali and the actual original Debian Linux distro is the fact that Kali has a lot of hacking and penetration testing tools pre-installed and pre-configured in it. Therefore, once you install Kali, you will have access to so many hacking tools without the need to install or configure any of them, which will save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. Now, just like any other operating system, you can install it as a main machine or as a virtual machine. Now, I'm going to install it as a virtual machine because like I explained in the previous lecture, we will not lose any functionality by using operating systems as virtual machines. And it comes with a lot of benefits because it's completely isolated from our computer that we always use. So if we break the virtual machine or if we want to delete it and reset it, it will not affect our main operating system. Now, as mentioned in the previous lecture, before creating and using virtual machines, you will have to install VirtualBox, and I showed you how to install it on Windows, Linux, and OS X. So once you have VirtualBox installed, you can go ahead and follow the steps that I'm gonna show you right now to install Kali Linux. Now, keep in mind, I'm doing these steps from an OS X computer, but you can follow the exact same steps on any operating system you have, whether you have Linux or Windows, as long as you have installed VirtualBox on your system as shown in the previous lecture. Now, the first thing that you wanna do is download the VirtualBox image of Kali Linux. So you can download it from the resources of this lecture. To access the resources of the current lecture, we're gonna scroll down to the lecture we're gonna click on the resources icon, and then we're gonna click on the resource that we want. And in this case, we want the Kali 2020 download page. So we're gonna click on it. Now, before going ahead with this, I want to highlight something that is very, very, very important. So please pay attention. This is a custom Kali image that I made for my courses. It is smoother and faster than the original one. It fixes a number of bugs and it contains a number of extra programs that we need for this course and are not included in the original release. So you do not have to use this custom image. You can use the original one. You can even use just a normal Linux distribution as long as you know how to manually install all of the missing programs and apply the fixes that I did myself. And you can see a full list of them here on the left. Therefore, if you ask us a question in the Q&A section and you're not using the custom image, the first thing that we will ask you is to use the custom Kali image that we made for you because we know the original one is broken and we will not know the changes you made in order to fix it. So if you have a 64-bit computer, download it from one of these links. Or if you have a 32-bit computer, then download the 32-bits version from here. Now, this is a big operating system. So I've actually already downloaded this before recording this lecture, and I already have it right here. So as you can see, you should get a file with a .ova extension. So you have the file name followed by .ova. To import this in VirtualBox, all we have to do is literally double click the file. As you can see, this will automatically run the file in VirtualBox and you'll get a window which you can use to modify the settings of this virtual machine. For now, I'm gonna keep everything the same and I'm just gonna click on import. Give it some time. And as you can see now, this is imported into my VirtualBox and we can go ahead and try to start it. But before doing that, I want to modify some settings. So we're gonna click on the virtual machine that we want to modify its settings, which is Kali Linux in this case. And then I'm gonna click on the settings icon. 
Now, depending on the host operating system that you're using, the layout of the settings menu in here might be slightly different, but using it is exactly the same. So make sure you follow the steps that I'm going to show you right now, and it should work on all operating systems, whether you're using Windows, Linux, or OS X. So the first thing that I want to modify is the system settings. So I'm going to click on system. And in here, you can first of all modify the amount of RAM or memory that will be allocated for the virtual machine. Now, depending on how much RAM you have in total, you can give this more or less. Two gigabyte is enough. You can get away with one gigabyte, but it might be a little bit slow. So I'm gonna leave it at two. I have 16 gigs, so two will not cause any pressure on my host operating system. Next, I'm gonna click on the processors. And as you can see, by default, it's only given two cores. Again, you can give it more or less. You can get away with one core. It'll be too slow. Two is good enough. The more, the better. Again, it all depends on how much resources you have and can afford to give to virtual machines. I have eight CPUs. So giving it two will not put too much pressure on my operating system. Next, I'm going to go to the network settings and I'm going to set this to use a NAT network. Now, sometimes when you select a NAT network, you will not see a network name in here. If you don't, then don't worry about it. This is a common issue and I have the solution for you in the resources of this lecture. Just click on it, follow it, and you'll see how to fix this issue. Now for me, as you can see, I already have a NAT network in here. So I'm going to keep it on this one. And this setting will basically create a virtual network where my host machine, which is my Mac OS X computer, is going to be the router for this network. And then all the virtual machines are going to be clients connected to this network. So they're going to get internet connection from my host machine. And at the same time, all of my virtual machines will be connected to the same virtual network. This is very handy because my virtual machines will be able to communicate with each other and therefore we'll be able to use the Kali machine to hack into the others. We'll be able to test network attacks and do much more. So this setting will first allow my virtual machines to have internet connection and it will also allow them to communicate with each other through this virtual NAT network. Now this virtual network will rely on the connection of your host computer. So it will not need any extra interfaces. It will not need any extra adapters. And as far as the virtual machines are concerned, they are connected to an Ethernet network. But in reality, they are connected through the host machine. Now, if you're on VirtualBox 6 and have a screen with high resolution, you'll need to go to display and set the scale factor to 200%. Otherwise, the virtual machine screen will be too small, but only do this if you have a screen with a high resolution and if you're using VirtualBox 6. Otherwise, do not modify this option. Now I'm done here, so I'm gonna click on OK and we can start the virtual machine like any other virtual machine. We're just gonna click it and then click on start. Now, if you followed everything that I did so far and faced a black screen or got an error, please check out the links in the resources of this lecture as they cover the most common issues that you could face when starting Kali. If you got an issue that is not covered there, don't worry, please ask us in the Q&A section and we will respond to you within 15 hours and help you fix this issue. Now I'm gonna click inside the virtual machine and hit enter. And as you can see, we have the login screen for Kali Linux. So right now it's asking me for the username and the default username is root, R-O-O-T. I'm gonna hit enter. And then it's asking us for the password, which is the reverse of the username. So it is T-O-O-R. Hit enter and that's it. Now we're inside the virtual installation of Kali Linux. Now, don't worry about how this operating system looks different. And if you don't know how to use it, we will cover all of that and we'll cover its basics as we go through the course. But for now, if you just look at the top right in here, 
you'll see that this virtual machine thinks that it is connected using a wire. So you can see wire connected. So Kali thinks that it is connected to an ethernet network. And that's because like I said, we set it to use an at network. So if I just go to my web browser, as you can see, we have internet access in Kali Linux, and this is provided from the host computer. So Kali is connected to the internet through the host computer. And as far as Kali is concerned, the host computer is a router and it is connected to this router through an ethernet cable. If Kali feels a little bit too slow or laggy, please give it a few minutes if this is the first time you run it. Because when you start it for the first time, it will automatically check for updates. Once this process is done, the system will start running a little bit smoother. Also, it goes without saying, if your computer is not powerful enough, then close any unused applications before starting Kali to free up resources. But as you'll see throughout the course, 2GB of RAM and 2CPUs are enough to run Kali smoothly.